Jupiter Broadcasting presents this program in stereo, where available. This episode brought to you in part by GoDaddy.com. This week on the Linux Action Show, we got our hands on Linux Mint's new Debian edition, and we'll share our early impressions. Broadcom just dropped a bomb of awesome, and we got all kinds of excited. Then, we take a look under the hood of Ubuntu and find out how- Blah, 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 all over the world. Ah, oh, this week on the Linux Action Show. And welcome to season 13, episode 7? Episode yeah. 7. Yeah. Let's go with that. Yeah, I like it's it. episode 7. My name's Brian. That's Chris. This is the Linux Action hey Show. Hey there, Brian. Ooh, I liked that, actually. Yeah? We were like, introduce, this is the Linux Action Show. This is the Linux Action Show, and this runs Linux. That's Tron, Brian. You see this? The Tron, Tron. trailer runs Linux. Oh, oh, yeah. Trust me. Trust me. The first time I saw that trailer, pause, <laughs> zoom in. Zoom in. I think that's... Wait a minute. Oh, my gosh. You got to love my BuzzFeed, yep. too, because, you know, I share these stories in the BuzzFeed. Gorgeous. And, and one of the first things people say in my BuzzFeed is, oh, my God, I want that on-screen keyboard. You know what? I thought the same thing. <laughs> I'm like, yeah, top is great. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I want that keyboard. So, you know, we've had we've had a lot of different movies Oh, over my gosh. The years. Olivia Wilde runs <laughs> Linux. Uh, a, lot of, a lot of famous movies over the years have ran Linux. Matrix, uh, yeah. uh, you know, TV shows too. Twenty Four ran KDE on a few of their desktops. Yep. Uh, but Tron, I mean, come on, right? That's got to be in the top. Big Bang Theory. Oh yeah. Yeah. They run Linux on Big Bang. Dude, it's Big Bang Theory. That's Do you watch true. that show? Uh, no, but that's the one people have told me a lot. So have you ever thought about what might be wrong with you? Have you ever thought that through? Well, I've been like, going through like an analysis step by step. of that, and yeah. I, I made like a what's wrong, what's right. I don't have anything in the what's right column yet, but I got Big Bang at the top of what's wrong. So yeah. I'm, you know, I've, that's what's wrong. First step is admitting you got a problem. That's that's yeah. the whole thing. <laughs> hey Chris, <laughs> yeah, it's not funny. You need <laughs> sorry, to watch Brian. the damn show. I'm sorry. All right, all right. Well, you know what? But that, seriously, Tron runs Linux. Just that, awesome. That shouldn't be a problem for me. I'll have uh, this Sunday free because we are taping this early um, on Thursday. So if you're watching this right now on Sunday Live, then you're watching an encore edition. Of the Linux Action Show, it's pretty fancy. I I don't like to really call it an encore di- edition. Okay, okay. I like to think of it more like uh, uh, we conned you into getting up early on Sunday <laughs> edition for okay. something that's not actually live. I thought maybe you were gonna go for like a reheated leftovers kind of a thing, like better no, the next day. No, I'm, I'm thinking more of a fraud edition of the <laughs> Linux Action Show. Dang it! Yeah. Well, uh, you know, we are doing this a little early, so if there's a major story that broke uh, over the weekend, uh, we'll we'll talk about it next week. We probably so will. Probably. So yeah. what we're saying is next week's episode will be better than this week's episode. It's it's theoretically possible. Brian. It's entirely possible. Hey, I have got. I'm just a madman. I've got two Android picks, but before we get to those, we should say hollow over to the boys over at thegodaddy.com because uh, you know they do bring these various shows to the peeps out there. We sure do. And this episode of the Linux Action Show is sponsored by Godaddy.com. The world's largest web host and domain name registrar. If you're making a bit back online, go to that comments. <laughs> got you covered. Domain names as low as $1.99 plus world-class hosting. World-class hosting? Unlimited disk space. Dan Bandwidth, do-it-yourself website builders, dedicated certificates, dedicated certificates, servers, servers. and uh, uh, SS, uh, SSL pages, and um, <laughs> like uh, you can use uh, you can use WordPress administrations. Yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. And then uh, and blogger then, chat rooms. Here's the great part. Uh, if you want to uh, purchase uh, five or six uh, SSL sell of uh, stamps, you can uh, go to there and enter in uh, Linux and Linux check out, code. and you get 10% off of uh, the Linux thing code. you get. The thing you get that's uh, restricted. Yeah, and if you want some hosting, some real cheap hosting, eh? You can uh, <laughs> type in their uh, Linux 20, eh? And we're in Fargo now. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> awesome job. Thanks Thank again, you, GoDaddy. Go check out GoDaddy.com. Uh, if you've never heard of it, how did you find this show? <laughs> no, what's your problem? Yeah, seriously, yes. <laughs> Don't tell GoDaddy that you already know about them because they think that by advertising with us, they're le- uh, you're they're, learning. Yeah, you're learning about it. Don't tell them that you're already smart and know about them. But you know what? We do thank you for using that code. <laughs> we should just actually cut this whole part of the show out because this was a really bad idea to say any of that. I know, but you know, we got to spice it up from time to time. <laughs> okay. Now, <clears throat> Brian. One of the things about my Android that I don't like so much is that that battery life just sometimes can be a little rough. Dude, it sucks a thing. Yeah. Now it I, sucks a thing. I got me an extended battery there on that Evo. I think I talked about that last episode. That did help. Yeah. But I also found another program that was my one-two combo for packs that 
has turned my phone into a half day phone to a two day phone. That's not bad. I likes it, dude. It's called Battery Foo <laughs> Saver. Battery Foo name. Battery Saver, really. That's kind there's, of a redundant name at that point. Yeah, but, but I like it. Yeah, it I is like few, Battery Foo. There's a few apps on the uh, Android Marketplace that do this, but what I really like about Battery Foo is it just only does this. It, and what that is nice. is it lets you schedule night mode on your phone or whatever time you want. And this is like uh, nice. this is like battery saver mode. You know, turn off the email and Twitter and data syncing services. You don't need to be syncing if you're not up at 3 a.m. Um, you could even do a few other yeah, things like turn off services. Yeah, but here's the thing, Chris. You're often up at 3 a.m. No, yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. I just have this turned off between 6 a.m. and 7 a.m. That's the only time I Yeah, the sleeping time. Yeah. yeah. Right, <laughs> right. But this is great because it's free, for one. So if you want to, uh, if you need a quick way to save battery life, and if you sometimes forget to throw your phone on the charger at night, this kind of might help you get through the next morning until you can get it on a charger again. So that's kind of nice. That's not bad. Now, another common question I've gotten from the I, piece, I, really, I really dig the Android picks that are there to overcome the limitations and deficiencies of the system. I know. Yeah. That, that, that is, unfortunately... A stage we're at with these phones because there's just the battery technology has not caught up with the technology in these or phones. maybe the OS technology has not caught up with the battery technology That's true. there is that I mean yeah it is a little hard it is a little hard at this point to look at it and go Android there must there must be something you, there must be something fundamentally wrong with how it's managing power all, all, all I know is I'm man, a big man Android fan I, mean, I know I know I know an Android phone has so much more power yeah. in a billion more ways than yeah, like yeah. an old Palm OS device or or like an old Apple Newton but geez man the Newton e 300 had 28 ba- hours of battery I life know, off I a know. single charge well eight hours of active use and I know I know it was a black and white screen it, it wasn't all that powerful I would of a say chip. that you know, know if that, you're looking but, if you're looking at the current crop of smartphones, unfortunately, it seems to be the iPhone that has the best battery life right now. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Because when I had an iPhone 3G, man, that, that sucker just, it, it basically just did. chewed up a battery and pooped it out. In the 4, in the iPhone 4, like the whole back area is battery? battery. And they only have like this uh. tiny part that's actually phone circuitry. <laughs> <laughs> so, you know. Huh. <laughs> Funny how so, that works out. yeah. A ton of problems, huh? <laughs> so. How, huh, strange. But, when you do have a rock and battery and you feel like uh, chewing down some media, <clears throat> maybe this is why your battery so low, people. One of the things a lot of you have asked me about is, can you recommend a really good media player? There's a lot out there for the Android phones. I really like uh, Rock Player Universal. And the, th- the reason why I like Rock Player Universal is they keep it updated and they use a really... Uh, current build of FFmpeg, yeah. which basically means anything the so processor in your phone can handle, it'll play. Really? And so you don't have any you know, format limitations, stuff like that. There's still DRM limitations if you have and, a DRM and, how, and how's the playback? I mean, you throw a decent size oh, video. Uh, <clears throat> I've tried uh, our large video file size, yeah. which, is, uh, which is 960 by 540 it's uh, pretty, screen it's resolution. Pretty and, yeah, it plays great on my Evo. The ah. iPod 360p version also plays great on my Evo. Using this you know, you rock know player where that, really that very same thing plays great? Nokia yeah. on the N900. Yeah. Uh, you know what I have to install to make it play great? Nothing. Nothing. It, it Actually, plays great. Actually, you know, our videos, the they also don't require any, any media player, but this is a... I guess it's kind of the Android bashing hour, is not all Android phones ship with all of the media codecs. It It's up to the hardware manufacturer to license the codecs. I guess that makes sense. That right? makes sense because it's codec issues. I right. Mean, you know, Google's not going to go out and give away a free system right. and, then, and then also give them free codecs right. to that's, go with that's it. That's basically yeah. what it is. So it mine does have the codecs, but if you happen to have one that doesn't or you have like a community a version of Android OS that doesn't, doesn't have the codecs, you can also get this. Hey, and it's, you know that's what? That's not bad. It's free. I like free a it's lot. It's not bad, Brian. Free is great so for me. That is uh, Rock Player Universal. I'll have a link to App Brain. Um, and I also wanted to give a quick shout out to Majo, who who created a list of all of the Android picks so far, which I have not oh, yet really? published. Where's that at? Uh, oh, he just emailed it to you or something. He made he made a list on App Brain, and so I'm going to take that. And oh, that's cool. He he's been keeping it current, so I might throw a link into there now until just I put something over official. to it. Yeah. Oh, that's way. It's cool, really man. nice him to do that. Way so. way 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 to go, dude. Yeah. Yeah. All right, Brian. Let's do the news. What's new in the news this week? All right, Brian. Our top story on the news docket for this week. Broadcom. Open oh, sourcing yeah. the mother effing Broadcom wireless this is, driver. You know what? Screw it. This is the story of... 
of the year. Man, how I, about three years awesome. too late, though, Broadcom, but awesome still. Dude, everyone still uses Broadcom. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, three years oh, too late in no. that we wanted it sooner. Yeah, yeah. But come on, this is going to make a I huge wonder, difference it, to all of us. I wonder if this is motivated by losing market share to Intel a little oh, bit. Oh, probably. Yeah, yeah. Probably. You want to make it easier for the manufacturers. Yeah. Yeah. You know, people get, people, you know, HP puts out a laptop. They don't want us crazy, fanatical Linux Bitching. users yeah. complaining Just all the use time. Use the Intel so stuff. Here you go. Here you go. Boom. But Broadcom it's actually makes pretty good wireless chips. You'll see a lot of hardware manufacturers use Broadcoms because they're really, really sturdy. Yeah, um, yeah, they're good. This is actually really good, good news. Chips. It's uh, it's for the 802.11n chipsets they have coming out. It's uh, Love so it. <clears throat> here's what you want to look for in a laptop or a netbook. You want to look for something that has one of these wireless chipset series: the BCM4313 or the BCM43224 or the BCM43225. And I'll have a link to that in the show notes. Yep. But that will get you eventually. Uh, you'll install a Linux distro and my wireless guess, will just work. My guess is it's going to come pretty quick. Yeah, they've already submitted the drivers to the kernel to the kernel team. Yep, yep. That's it, awesome. I mean, if we can hope that they get it through in the next like couple of weeks. We could have this in time for the next rat crop of, of this. Distros. Is kind of funny. One of the uh, awesome. first replies to the mailing list is, "Whoa, is it like cold in here?" And then the guys be like, "Yeah, I'm in hell today, and it's frozen over down here." <laughs> nice. Yeah, you gotta I mean, love we the professionalism. I mean, at, at this point. We did not expect this no. anymore. We just gave up on it. Oh, and I saw, and, and it's funny because uh, I'll link to this in the show notes too, but the uh, the guys that from Broadcom that announced it just nonchalantly uh, in their post are just like, uh, oh, hey, guys, uh, by the way, uh, here's your source code. You can't have source code. <laughs> Henry. Henry, uh, oh, I, don't, I won't give out his last name because he doesn't look like he wants to have a public name, but Henry uh, submitted it, and he's like, here you go. Uh, we'd like to announce the initial release of our fully open source Linux driver. And uh, uh, you can grab it from Git right here. Yep, enjoy. Awesome. Very cool. So Just awesome. Big, big congrats. High to, five uh, to Broadcom, man. Now, I, I mean, it may be later than we wanted to, but you know what? Yeah. Way to go. Yep. I'm I thrilled. <clears throat> now, thrilled. I was almost going to make this my runs Linux pick. If you were the dev that worked on it, shoot me an email next time you're in oh, Seattle. Yeah. Free beer for you. Free beer. Free beer. Now this next this next news story I was going to make my uh, runs Linux pick. But I decided instead I'm going to talk about it as a news story because I think it's really cool. Yeah, and, lay it on me. Uh, so this this box here that I'm looking at is uh, it's fanless, it's hardcore looking. It's got it four expansion slots. It comes with two gigabit uh, network cards. What is it? It is a tiny little Linux computer um, with uh, some really I don't know if you would say it's not going to be like a desktop computer, what is but this? it could actually. It's a Core Two Duo, dude. It's a Core Two Duo. You can go up to eight gigabytes of RAM. It's got dual gigabit uh, LAN NICs, but also wow. because it supports uh, four expansion cards, you can load it up with uh, all kinds of exp- uh, storage or other, you know, like, like networking cards. SATA cards and all sorts so of stuff. So check out what yeah. I'm doing with this guy. So looking at this guy, you'll notice one of the problems is there's not like a lot of built-in storage, right? So, and because of its, of its relative yep. size and it comes with mounting plates and stuff like that. Oh, man. I've got a client that has a really kind of special setup and I think I'm going to mount this up in a closet to the wall. Yeah. And this is going to be a Linux file server. I'm going to use one gigabit port for the for the LAN users, and the other gigabit port is going to be an oh, iSCSI oh, oh. dedicated port oh, for storage on the network. That's so. cool. And they're going to have like just this little, little Linux Samba file server yeah. in the corner. Um, hopefully, the room is ventilated enough. It's supposed to run at a pretty good temperature. I'm going to put a, sl- a slower. You can put Celeron CPUs in this. So I'm going to put a Celeron. Might in this. as well, yeah. Keep run it running cool. cool. Yeah. yeah. Low low power usage. So that's awesome, dude. I'll report back in a couple of weeks once I've gotten I'd that in. I'd love to and see. I don't know if it's actually oh. shipping yet, so it might actually be like a month before I get a, get a chance to actually set it but up. Dude, but. that thing looks great. Yeah. Yeah, so I'll, I'll I do a review. Like that. Now, uh, this, so nerdy. this next story, you were like, Chris, oh my gosh, oh my gosh, did you hear about that? And I was like, yeah, netbook, Brian, whatever. I don't care about netbooks Come anymore. On. You're like, no, you got to check this out. So uh, there it is, Ubuntu 1010 beta with a ne- with the with the netbook remix new UI has been released. It sure has. It looks really slick. It looks great. Um, it did a super nice job on the design. Looks better than Gnome Shell, just saying. Super just nice saying. job. Uh, it does. It does look significantly better than Gnome Shell. See, I mean, what we have here, and I would really like to see this, and maybe I don't know if something could be done using LibNotify, but I'm ready now for on my netbook and stuff like that. These icons up on the screen, like the email and chat and stuff, need to be live. I would like to see notifications there and yep. stuff like that. Yeah, I, I want. I want to see little badges pop up that say, "Hey, you've got this I much think, over I here." I think it's time, right? But you know, this is really cool because this is going to be a fully integrated. Uh, Ubuntu machine, so you can run regular Ubuntu software packages. It's got Gwibber built in, which yep. you're a big fan of. Uh, for oh, their I love Gwibber. Yeah. Oh, I love me Gwibber. Yeah. So, I don't know, dude. I, I, 
I think I'll throw it on in Tripoli. Yeah, yeah, it's it's worth playing around with. It's very cool looking. It works great. My uh, my only Scheduled thing for is final in October. My only issue is uh, I'm probably just going to go back to Stock Gnome or something like that. Anyway, yeah, I know. <laughs> See, that's the thing. It works great, too. but like uh, like even my little my little Lenovo tablet here with the touch screen. Uh, it's a uh, you just want a full machine. This this little sucker. It works fine. Yeah, yeah. The touch screen works great with Stock Gnome. Yeah, yeah. Why? Why do I need the bigger buttons? Why do I need the different UI? It, honestly, I mean, if, if this were horrible to use touchscreen, I'd try that out. Yeah. But that, but the experience here with stock GNOME and KDE is actually pretty good, so I, I just am not drawn to it. But what I like about this is how nice it looks, that it could give us a little bit of press. Yeah. I like the press that it gets us. I like the attention that people are like, yeah. oh my gosh, oh my yeah. gosh, look how pretty that people is. People like good design, and that'll, that's often what will yeah. get attention uh, from the mainstream consumer. You got it, design. Man. That's what I'm talking about. Yeah, yeah. That's So I, I don't know if that's it's going to change the world. I mean, come on. The original Netbook remix from Ubuntu didn't. Now, you were mentioning cool, you just loaded the uh, new 1010 beta on here, and yep. you were playing with the multi-touch stuff. Yeah, you you want to talk about that maybe like next week or something? Uh, we'll talk about it actually in a couple of weeks. Okay. So I've got, uh, I've, I've got the multi-touch. I'm on the multi-touch. Uh, How's it going? Uh, kind of watching it. It's, it's working. It's great. Oh, all it's right. great. Uh, they have they have a lot of work to do. I'm uh, not gonna. I'm that's not why gonna you want to give it a couple that. weeks. I want to give it a couple of weeks because they're working fast. They're doing a great job. I I don't want to talk about it and review it until it's hey, ready. Hey Brian, that's not going to be hey, right. Brian. That's not right. That's decent of you. Thanks. You're I try welcome. to be a decent guy. <laughs> Unless you're Fedora, then <laughs> oh, f you. Man. Oh, Brian. I'm just kidding. Oh, that geez. time. I see. Here's what I'm trying to do, ladies and gentlemen. Ladies and gentlemen, listen up. Ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> See, now, Cat in the Engine in the chat room likes that design. He says it's minimalistic, it's quick, it's I pretty, like it. It's yeah. pretty, yeah. yeah I, I think people should use it. But here's the thing. So last episode, I was totally harsh on Fedora, Oh, right? right. Yep, I yeah. recall. Episode yeah. before that, no. No? No. Yeah. I'm trying to... Spread it out. Every other episode. Okay. All right. Um, That's decent. But then, That's just fair. now, I remembered how out. last week I did it and how much fun it was. <laughs> And so I did it again. But I'm going to make this pledge right now. <laughs> you kind of like a... There's going to be no more fedora hating all episode. Whoa. This episode, I'm, I'm not even going to say the word fedora after I'm done talking here, ladies and gentlemen. Nice. Uh, so from now, from right here, we will not mention okay. the distro which cannot be named. <laughs> right. Okay. I'll all try right. to remember so that. So from now on, we're just going to say the distro which cannot be named okay. or shall not be named. All right. Duh. <laughs> It'll be great. Now, speaking of... What are we of, talking about? Uh, well, let's talk about Ubuntu. Speaking of distros, and we were talking a little bit about Ubuntu. Uh, I can say that one. This is, a, this is an interesting article that came out over at uh, Linux Planet, and it's an interview with... Uh, is, it, is it Matt Zimmerman? What's the... Uh, he's, he's the guy that took over some of the uh, CTO. Yeah, Matt Zimmerman, yeah. the CTO role over at Con Canonical. Uh, here's what I found really interesting. Now, I might be reading into this a little bit. Probably. It's essentially an article that just talks about you know, how Ubuntu does whatever Ubuntu does and stuff like that. So if you're interested in that, check that out. I got a couple of tidbits, though, that I pulled out of it. Mm -hmm. This one's interesting to me. All right, you ready for this? All From right. an accounting perspective, Zimmerman noted that he's using elements of the Scrum approach. <laughs> so he's able to report the output capacity of his team. Uh -huh. His team, are you ready now? Where's this number here? His team, Brian, is about... 120 people. Okay. Now, if I'm understanding correctly, that means that's the Ubuntu development team is about 120 people. Yeah, that, that could be a lot so of what different is, disciplines, though. What is the Scrum? It's agile. I, I, you don't. I don't know. Do you want? Do you want me? Yeah, want me to give you the, All I'm right. Curious. So, Scrum methodology. Um, all right. So, if you actually look up the the next paragraph, it, the paragraph before that was uh, we're using bits and pieces of different methodologies. Right. Uh, this is from Zimmerman. We are using some components from extreme programming, which is lame. Uh, Scrum and others. Uh, different engineering teams have different requirements, so we're experimenting with different approaches, and that's good. Right. That's what every software company does. So, sure, basically, sure. the idea is this: there are in the software development world, many ways to get the job done. The old way of doing things, or the way that's considered the old way, which isn't really the old way, but we talk about it like it's the old way, <laughs> is called something that is referred to in a negative way as waterfall. Okay, now, I've heard of that. Waterfall is wonderful in that waterfalls are pretty, and you want to look at waterfalls and you want to camp by them. And I never stop chasing them. No, well. You're supposed to stop chasing them because there's rivers and there are lakes and you're used to them. That's true. Yeah. So uh, so the idea with waterfall is this. And this is, this is half wrong, but I'm condensing it for you. Um, you have 
an idea for a piece of software, right, Chris? Yeah. What kind of software do you want to make? Uh, yeah. Let's say an Android app for the Linux Action Show. Android app for the Linux Action Show. So you write down in a piece of paper everything that app does, right? Okay, okay. And you go round and round with me. Let's say I'm your developer, and uh-huh. let's say uh, our good friend Jeremy. Okay. Good friend Jeremy who sometimes helps out. He's uh, he's the tester. Yeah, okay. All right, so all of us are working together to make that document big and beefy, and it covers everything. The whole feature list. Every, pixel by pixel, the UI, wow. exactly how the, how the app I'm, works. I'm impressed with how organized big, I am. Big old document. All right, five years later, we're done with that piece of paper. <laughs> Exactly. What we do is then we then you then hand it over to me and say, okay, go. go make I, this. I need this in two weeks. Right. Uh, I then start working on it. Yeah. And uh, I supposedly have a deadline and I work towards it and I just keep working towards that goal and hopefully I make it and then I and then I miss it. I miss it by about three years. Okay. Um, and then wow. every, and then everyone starts making fun of you for being like Windows Seven or Windows Vista or whatever. Right. Right. So. Kind of, kind of waterfall, right? Okay, that's waterfall. Agile, aka Scrum, Scrum uses the methodology. A Scrum is like, uh, you ever watch like uh, rugby? Yeah. Okay. All right. You know when they they huddle up, and they have a quick little meeting. They're yep. like, okay, what are we gonna do? We're gonna go over here. You run over here. You go that. Yeah. That's a Scrum. Ah. Uh, so so Scrum is kind of named after that. So the it's like sprint is, huddle, sprint huddle. The idea is kind of. Okay. So the idea is yeah, sprint huddle. So everyone gets together and says, you know what, we're gonna do a quote unquote sprint ah. or an Iteration, and you say we're going to try to get these things done during this. Yes, here's oh, okay. two weeks or three weeks or six weeks or whatever, some small piece of time, ah. and then at this is what we're going to do in this week. We're going to finish these couple of tiny things, and then we move on and we ship them. Gotcha. That's what it is. It's basically so a that's way their of approach. dividing up the work into smaller chunks. So that's the methodology that Ubuntu. Uh, Ubuntu's development the Canonicals uses. currently working. And you think on that's it. a good approach? It's fine. It seems like a more realistic one. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a better one? Eh, yeah. No. They, they all, all suck, suck pretty bad. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Yeah. All right. Developing software sucks, man. Yeah. If you're thinking, if you're like, if you're like 17 years old right now, and you're like, man, I want to be in a software developer, don't. <laughs> don't. You no. Know, you know what? What itself makes great money and is far less stressful? Anything. <laughs> Lion taming. Uh, uh, you know, shark feeding. You know the guys that are in scuba suits and they're holding onto the harpoon yeah. and they're trying to kill Sean Connery as James Bond right. and they die? Yeah. That's way easier. That's easier. Funner. Yeah. Um, well, probably mean, has better pay. Oh, for sure. Uh, you get to go outside. Mm-hmm. Um, so do those things. Okay. Uh, Agile and Scrum. Here's, here's a crazy thing. All right. People get religious about that. Yeah. Like, they're like, oh, yeah. It's oh, a Scrum's methodology. The way to go. You, yeah. Oh, Scrum's the only way to go. Do you know that there are actually people in this world, their job is to be the Scrum master. I am not farting with you right now. Guess what the Scrum master does? What does the Scrum master do? Guess. Guess. Take take everything I've told you right now. Are they like a project manager? Are no. they like a... Um, they're... The master. What does the master do? Huh? <laughs> Are you kidding me? Just like what? Like, uh. must be some sort of project. I've manager. taken I've taken tons of agile training. I've read every agile book on the planet. Yeah. Uh, here's the thing. You're just like the master of a, a process. A project manager is great because they get stuff done. You know what I'm saying? It's great, right? Like right. they manage a project. And a scrum master, you know what they do? Every day. Every day. Oh yeah. There's there's the uh, the classic agile. Thanks uh, to Rika in the chat room. Uh, uh, picture everyone uses uh so every day and part of part of agile and scrum is every day you have a meeting and sometimes they call it a stand-up meeting or sometimes they call it a strong so it's supposed to be quick 15 minutes you're in and done and what's happening what's our status let's go that's done take everything offline right gotcha take it offline right there's a person there he's like everyone come into this room let's have a meeting and then he says then he goes oh, around boy. the room and he says what do you do that makes my blood pressure and then everyone right leaves there. And he writes it down. I used to work with a guy like that. Now, here's the great thing. Oh, my gosh. Now, the things that a scrum master does are fine. You know what that's often called? Managing? A boss. Yeah. Or a manager. He's yeah. supposed to do that anyway. Like, honestly, that's what I do. That's, that's like four and a half tenth of a percentage of what I do. Right. There are people who go to school. That's their entire job. If you go to LinkedIn and look yeah. on their profile, it just says in caps, Scrum um, Master. I kid you not, I used when I used to work at the bank, we'd have daily 30-minute status meetings. Yeah. And it was one at 10, 10 a.m. And it was one guy's job. His only job was to run that meeting. A 10 o'clock meeting every day. And then he did nothing else. Yeah. That's kind of what it is. 
I hated that person. Yeah. I hope you anybody out there is not that person. That person. I, and because that means with, I hate you as a person. I've worked with guys <laughs> that were great guys. Yeah. That were scrum masters. The guy actually was a pretty good guy and a great barbecuer. He just happened to have a job that I hated him for. It was funny. What? I've worked with scrum masters before. Also great barbecuers. <laughs> I think what it is is scrum masters have plenty of free time yeah. to get really good at barbecuing. But Maybe, so dude. That's, so that's scrum. That's cool. Now you know you've been you've been schooled on what all that stuff is. One of the other things that's really great in this Ubuntu article is they say, what are some of the tools you guys use to collaborate? Because, you know, they're all over the world. Yeah. And I'm always looking for that because we're all over Washington, well, within yeah. a... 20 mile radius and uh all over but we use like google docs and stuff to collaborate it's like it's like the distance between like uh like germany and like france like like whatever the capital of germany is and right. whatever the capital of france is and like whatever and the Paris. capital of that third oh. european country i think there's three of them uh is they're, they're only like third 20 30 miles well apart. i know the third country is london no, I'm kidding, you guys. Don't L- be mad L- at us. Londonburg? We're just pulling on you. I don't. I think it's Russia. I wanted to talk about one of these apps that they use for collaboration because it's kind of it might be a Google Docs killer for some people. All right, lay it on me. It's called I I'm, I apologize, Gobby or Gobi G O B B Y. Yeah, I tried this. It's out for Mac, Windows, and Linux, um, and it supports real time collaboration. Different people writing are in different colors. And uh, you can see who's using, who's editing the doc at any given time. That's and cool. you can browse um, network shares, HTTP web dev shares, yep. things like that. So all your files are in one spot. And I don't know. I mean, it just seems like a pretty nice little plain app. And plus, it's Mac, Windows, and Linux. No, I dig that. Yeah. Yeah. So it if, looks you're, cool. if you, if you know, if you just need some collaborative editing, like for show notes, like for us, and you don't necessarily need all of Google Docs, this might be a nice way to take it all offline. Or you don't want to have Google controlling your exactly. Docs. Yeah. yeah. Exactly. So uh, G O B B Y. I'll put a link in the show notes. You guys can check it out if you're curious. Might be a nice way too if you're working in an office. Uh, you could just work off your local file share, and everybody could just have a nice collaborative document. I love it. So pretty cool. And that's what that the cool. uh, Ubuntu guys use. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, well, that's way cool. Yeah. So I kind of dig that. I might, might give that one a whirl. All right, Brian. Well, that's all the news for this week. You know what's amazing about running Linux, Chris? <laughs> what, Brian? <laughs> Is that there are so many choices there are a lot of choices brian now one of the big choices we've had over the years is something called mint linux mint dude it has been traditionally based on ubuntu yeah yeah, and uh it's been great it It, started life long long ago as a way of adding realistically a lot of media codecs to the default Ubuntu installation. And also improving the theme. Well, that was later. Oh, really? Yeah, that, oh, that, okay. that came later. Now, oh, okay. now, once we started talking about it a little bit, a listener of the Linux Action Show said, you know what? I do like, I I love do like the Linux the Action story. Show. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to go over to the Linux Mint found project, and I'm going to lend my considerable oh, okay. art talents. That's right. My astounding design skills. Because, of course, it is a talented person. Because, why, Chris? Because they were a listener of the Linux Action Show. That is correct, Chris. Yeah, yeah. To Linux Mint. And make it look like one of the coolest looking Linux distributions. Or, dare I say, any damned operating system on planet Earth. I really do like it. And I like a lot of the features they roll in, including... Uh, a lot of their own tools, like a backup utility. Oh, yeah. Uh, a new software. Uh, well, it's not a repo so much. It's like an easier download install. Kind of, it's if called, you're familiar with PCBSD, it's BBL, called MIT PBL. files. MIT, MIT files, yeah. MIT files yeah. are basically just descriptor files of, of, of additional software. They, they utilize the repos yeah. and stuff so like that. So it's kind of. Feature wise, though, it's similar to like uh, what OpenSUSE now does with the one click install. Or PCBSD with like the PBIs. That. Yep, yep, yep. Now, Good stuff. There's, there's been a big shift for the Linux Mint dudes. Uh, you know, Linux Mint makes a lot of different distributions. Uh, uh, they make uh, an XFCE version oh, yeah. of Linux Mint, a KDE version. Yep, yep. I think they even make a, a like um, an Enlightenment version or something. Probably. And to, now to join that list... And they I, made a Windows version, too. <laughs> based on, they make everything. Based on Windows 7. Uh, <laughs> Windows 7 so Mint you know, edition. I, Windows Mint. I guess they've been kind of talking and thinking about doing this for like the last three years. There's a Fluxbox community edition. A f- yep, yep. Fluxbox. Um, <laughs> so I guess for about the last three years, they've been saying, hey, let's I better do- not say anything wrong. I don't want to alienate the billions of Fluxbox know, faithful. Right? <laughs> the f- the, well, they call themselves the uh, Flux fanatics. 
Yeah. Do they really? No, I don't know. I don't know what they, they do call now, themselves. Dude. Yeah, they do now. <laughs> um, it's been started right here. If you could go to Wikipedia.org. No, you know that got you in trouble last time. <laughs> yeah, I know. They so they've released uh, Linux Mint Debian edition, and this kind of that this kind of joins those ranks. This isn't a full replacement of their uh, pat, of their core Ubuntu based. Yeah, it distro. could be. Maybe we'll see. Yeah, we'll see. But it's, how it's it goes. Debian. Not Ubuntu as the base. Now, of course, Ubuntu is based on Debian, so really it's just stripping out that Ubuntu layer. Yeah, the the Ubuntu customizations, but also, uh, you know, Ubuntu pulls from not quite... So Debian, Debian has like three main yeah. stages. They have, uh, and I might get these out of order, but I'm going to try. Denial. They have unstable, testing, and stable. Right, those and, are the ones I and was thinking And Ubuntu pulls from somewhere around there, makes their own fork of it, and then builds their distro. Right. Now, uh, what Mint is going to be doing for... And somewhere along the lines, uh, people from the Fedora... Oh, crud, you did it! it. For, from the uh, distro, which shall not be named, <laughs> uh, get upset because they feel like uh, uh, Ubuntu is just leeching. Hey, of you know what? There actually, there's been some talks about doing a Mint based on Fedora, so you never know. Um so they've been talking about doing this for three years, and the idea is that this is going to be based on Ubuntu testing. So it's not quite the super unstable <laughs> That's stuff. the stupidest idea ever. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, I would try it. I would try it. Hey, you never know. You never Ow. know. Maybe they could make it wonderful oh, for you. Dude, Chris, I don't know if that's true or not, but that was the funniest thing I've heard all week. <laughs> so uh, take a look at it while we talk about it here. Oh, okay. Now, now the first thing you'll notice is it looks like Linux Mint, yeah. and it's really, really green. Yeah. And here's the thing. They really do a nice job on the design of yeah, this I thing. Yeah, I I'm, I mean, we're not going to talk about the design for a lot because it's just Linux Mint. It looks great. If you haven't even checked out the screenshots, you owe it to yourself to do it because yeah. it looks so good. Even if you're running OpenSUSE or whatever, take a look at this because maybe it'll give you some ideas of how to set up a great-looking desktop. True, true. Now, um, th initially, they're going for a, you know a similar look to exactly what you would expect if you were running a regular Linux Mint based on Ubuntu. But one of the things they're doing, because they're pulling from Debian testing, is they're planning to have an always rolling release, meaning there's not going to be like this big version you have to go download and upgrade to. You're just always going to have steady updates to the system. Chris, can I ask you a question? Yeah, yeah. Did you modify the terminal? Nope, nope. So are you telling me that Linux Mint, at least in the Debian edition, yep. by default, it prints out a reindeer with... I'm assuming those are udders right yeah, here. Yeah, yeah, those are not right balls. Right here, those are udders. Those are udders, yeah. Uh, I don't know if you can see that in the yeah. video. No, it's a mama uh, reindeer. telling you a quote. Yep. Every time you start, yep. it takes up, uh, they, it looks like 10 lines of text. I kind of like it, though. And they also turn on all the different line coloring and stuff, which is nice. You know, on a text console, it just scrolls right past. I don't care. Dear Terminal. Um, but, Beautiful. But Beautiful. I, I really, Brian... I'm I'm telling you right here, right now, Chris of the Linux Action Show says I am all about this rolling release stuff. This is what I loved about Gentoo. This is what people tell me they love about Arch. Yeah. And now I can have an Adebian distro. It is nice, isn't it? It is nice. Yeah. And, and there are some advantages to running stock Debian over Ubuntu. Like, I have a client and a potential client coming up that is an all Debian shop. Okay. And there are slight differences in the configurations and stuff like that that I just get used to on Ubuntu that when I sit down in Debian I'm just slightly lost every now and then. Right. So I dig the idea of while I'm working on this project I could load up Linux Mint I keep my same standard desktop UI this, all the regular packages I'm used to all of the regular interfaces and all that stuff and now I can just swap out the bottom part like it's like I don't know. It just seems really, really elegant. It seems like a really good solution. And at first, I, when I, I first heard disagree. of it, it's not. Bad. When it's I first heard of it, I thought, well, you know, who cares? Why not just use the Ubuntu edition? I'm sure it's going to work better for a while. Probably. But after thinking about it for a bit, looking at it from a well, wait, I do need to actually load a Debian box at some point. Wait a minute, I could just load Linux Mint and get a nice UI on top of Debian because sometimes it's a bit of a biatch to set up a UI in Debian. Not as hard as it used to be. I don't care for this menu. I know the big menu is. It, it, it's so many clicks to get to things. Big it's menu hard is to big, things. and it has a lot of clicks. Big menu is big. Mm -hmm. Big menu <clears throat> is big. Good default package selection, though. I mean, yeah. what you'd expect from Mint, they went out and it's picked the best stuff. Almost identical to Ubuntu. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's, there's only so many really good stuff, but they've you know they've done well and. I don't know. It, the you know performance just, is also really good. I disagree with that, man. There, there are some distros out there that are doing a really great job. Better than these guys? Yeah. You think? Uh, for for package selection? Yeah. I think so. Because I mean, really, what are you picking for your default browser? 
Firefox? Oh, uh, okay. Really? All right. Really? It is time to maybe step up to Chrome. It's time to step up yeah. to Chromium or, or hell, I'm with you Epiphany on that. Epiphany or something. Something faster. Something with more features. Do something have, more uh, stable. I don't see a me Gwibber menu. I really dig that in Ubuntu. I'm not like you couldn't uh, add nope, it. Nope, nope, nope. It, it, it's, mm. you know, it's just missing some stuff in the internet. It's early, oh, too. Gwibber's in there. We shouldn't say. It now, just doesn't have the, the little global menu. A disclaimer, thing. there's a lot of known problems. Well, anyway. I don't know about a lot, but there's some known problems. Uh, I actually wasn't able to even have it installed. We're just looking at the live scene. You know what I do like, though? F Spot. <laughs> yes. <laughs> F Spot instead of. That's uh, one of the things I, I like that Mint does that. is they're not afraid of mono. You know, they're yeah, not. I like that. They want good software. Yeah. And I, and I dig that. And they're not weak need and you know, give out to the anti mono haters, which uh, those people who are anti mono. Um, uh, what about what about this whole Oracle? We already suing talked Google? about that. I know, so but much, I just, man. I'm just. It makes me so mad, Brian. It makes we me killed, so mad we that, that donkey. It makes me so mad that the lunatics in the community have robbed us of decent software on our desktop. Yep. And I know I can go out and install it. That's not the effing point. Yep. And it, and I hate it when we give in to the small, noisy minority. You know who didn't give in? Brian. That's right. Or yeah. Chris. Nope. The Linux Action in. Show. You know what I love Standing about the Linux strong. Action Show? Even when we're wrong, we're stubborn. You know. So. <laughs> So we win. Well, you know, it doesn't, it's not, I'm talking about, obviously I'm talking about F-Spot and Banshee. And it's not for me, it's not about mono. I don't care if they're written in Objective-C, they're good applications. Yeah. And they would, they've been taken from me as a user. My choice was taken. Now, I can go out, remove them, and install them. But I chose that distribution because it came with those nah, software packages. <laughs> I'm just saying. I don't know. And so I, I, I know, respect I that they're shipping those things in Mint. It's one more thing on the Mint list that makes me want to run this. Yeah. Yeah, it is. You know what it's, it'd be kind of like? Mm. It'd be kind of like if all the Mac users out there in the world, one day Apple comes out with Mac OS 10, I don't know, whatever the F they're 10 on, 7. 10, 7. Yeah. And you know what? No iPhone, no iPhoto anymore. You know what you have? Uh, Picasso. That would suck. That would suck for them because yeah. they've got all their photos yeah. stuck in this one app in this one format. They're used to working in a certain way. They probably chose to use a Mac for iPhoto or one of the similar apps. You know well, what I mean? And then think about it from the spousal side. Like if you finally got your your significant other to try a Linux desktop and get used to it, they put all their stuff in there, and all their boom, music in changes. Banshee, and all of their photos in F Spot. Boom. Now the good now the good news Done. the good news is what's the good news Brian? if you have if you installed like Ubuntu 10.04 had F spot you dist upgrade to 10.10 you it, still it, have F spot yep yeah, yeah, it it keeps it so that that is nice the problem is is if you do a fresh install or or oh here's your new netbook honey well it comes with this thing and and, and your yeah. honey it's like I don't want this and then she starts chopping and then you at get you a with divorce axes. over it and, you, and then you write Mark Shuttleworth a nasty email I know Brian I know man that happens a lot probably <laughs> doesn't it? Mark Shuttleworth must get so many divorce emails right now. So, anyways, uh, it's still early. This just like came it. out. Yeah, no, check it cool. out. We'd love to hear what you guys think. Uh, one, one, one thing I'll take away from it is uh, I really got to give them props because they just got the last release out, and then like what, like a, a month later, they come out would come out with a whole new one based on Debian. That They're seems, busy. It seems big. I don't know yeah. exactly how their support infrastructure works, but now they have got a whole bunch of different variants of Linux Mint. Yeah. So, yeah, I would like to see Chrome included. Uh, I would like to see the installer improved. Oh, totally new installer. Yeah. This is a totally new live CD installer. Yeah, that, I saw that. That they made with the intention of any Debian dis- was a little, distribution. It was a little buggy in VMware yeah. here when we were trying it out, but you know, we haven't tried it on raw hardware The UI is yet. a little rough around the edges for that still. But, you know, come on. It's 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 early still, and uh, I got to Also still only 32-bit. On you cannot get a 64-bit, and it's only a GNOME live CD, so it's early, but it's awesome. Most people still use 32-bit, though. And you know what? I think I will. You know? Uh, I think I will. I'm just... Uh, just because I need a, I just need like a, I need a month long Debian box to use so I can yeah. live in Debian, and this is gonna be perfect. You know, it's interesting. So, so uh, with for Illumination Software Creator downloads, mm-hmm. uh, I'm actually watching. Uh, you know, the 32 bit versus 64 sure, bit sure. downloads. Uh, we're looking for like every hundred 32 bit downloads, getting about uh, 50 to 60 64 bit downloads. Yeah, that I actually thought the number would be a lot lower. Yeah, no, I've been really surprised. Well, Mini Nessie in the chat room here, I know is running 64 bit Linux. Um, I, so we have a few. People in the live chat. I mean, room. I mean, half of my machines are 64 bit because I support, you know, I support both. Yeah, so I have yeah. to run both. But, yeah. uh, but I've I've been really really I guess surprised. I generally always go 64 bit unless I have some sort of specific compatibility reason not to. Right. Whenever I'm uncertain if the distro is going to run too good, like too good. Yeah. <laughs> when when if it go gooder. If it's going to uh, be too good, I don't want to be gooder. If it don't been go gooder, I'm gonna run third two bit. Right. Uh, not 64. No, I'm going to run. No, you know what I do, Brian? No, Brian. You know what <laughs> I do? Brian. 16-bit. 
What's up? Blue Dust Tayo. I know. Dust Tayo. Rich Oaf is What are we talking Rich about right now? This is a television program, probably. Probably. What are we talking about? I don't know. <laughs> All right, Brian. Well, that's our look at Linux Mint Debian Edition. We'd love to hear what everyone out there has to say, so head over to jupitercolony.com. Beautiful. And let us know. Lovely. And that brings us to the end of this week's broadcast, brought to you by Illumination Software Creator. Why, you may ask. Chris, ask me why. Brian, why? Because I make Illumination Software Creator, oh. and this is free advertising you can. for me. Illumination Software Creator, bringing you applications made visually by anyone, even your retarded neighbor, for Android, Whoa. for Windows, Whoa. for Mac OS X, oh. for Mamo nice. tablets for what else? Flash powered websites. And Haiku. guess guess what other app? Guess what? And for Linux. What about Haiku? I haven't released that yet. That's that's still kind of an Do alpha. that S, dude. Well I want Haiku. Oh, I'm sorry. I was too busy releasing for all the other platforms at, ever made. Look at I've got a Haiku smartphone, I've got a Haiku desktop, and a Haiku. <laughs> 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 oh, we just made fun of Haiku. I like Haiku. I love Haiku so much. Hey, so no, um, Haiku Sport is coming. Anyway, that's out there. Uh, I just want to make a, a quick call out. We recently had a, a contest. Oh, yeah, there you go. Contest was awesome. We had so many entries. Yeah. We ended up having to Did give you away. Pick a winner? We we picked three winners. Oh. Uh, because I had a hard time picking one because we had like ridiculous yeah. amounts of entries. I, yeah. So we, we gave we gave three awards out for doing different things. Uh, uh it was a it was a number guessing game. This uh this ne- this month's contest though mm-hmm. is uh uh the Hammurabi. Uh one of the first video games, one of the first computer games oh, okay. ever made. It's a it's one of those land management games. And they're gonna make it in illumination? They're making it in illumination. Oh, uh, so we started this only a couple of days ago. We've already gotten just a flood of people uh, cool. submitting their uh, their their entries for it. It's one of those games where you have like ten turns and you gotta feed your people and you have to buy like certain amounts of food. Oh yeah, Age and- of Empires. <laughs> Pretty much, it's all, so many games are based off of Hammurabi yeah. in a way. So anyway, uh, Marcel in the chat that. room would like you to add Commodore sixty four support. I'll, I'll tell you what, if you guys in the chat room will send me <laughs> a Commodore sixty four with one of those awesome old Commodore monitors, yes, and like all the peripherals, I will do that for you. All right, because I want one of but those. But you get to keep the Commodore. Oh, I, it's yeah, yeah. mine at feet. that point. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Also, um, I don't know if I mentioned this, but it is. You can pay whatever you want for it full time now. That's pretty risky. Yeah, that's pretty that's crazy. Not, I don't know. You're crazy. People, people need to be able to get it's access awesome, to this. So, I, as a consumer, think that's great. But then, as a as a business owner, I'd be like, well, that's kind of risky. You, you know what? It's working out great. That's cool. It's working out great. You know why? Because Illumination is awesome. So and, people pay for and it. People, people are going to pay for there it. You go. I mean, it's, it's either that or they're going to look at it and go, I don't want to pay for that. It's too expensive. Well, this way they can say how much it's worth to them. Radicalbreeze.com. There you have it. So, uh, we'll be back at our regular time next Sunday, 10 a.m. Pacific Live. It's yes. GMT Negative 8. Those of you not watching this live... You're missing out. It does, Yeah, but it doesn't matter to you, is what I'm saying. No, but so, it is like a two-hour show if you watch it live. Dude. Because we, we stop between segments and then fart around on the air for forever between segments and chat with the chat room and stuff like that. So, you're always welcome to join us. That's a good point. And get in on that. That's a good point. Right? It's kind of awesome. It is kind of awesome. Yeah. Okay, everyone, we'd like to hear your feedback. Head over to jupitercolony.com. You that's can a good do place. that. I like that. I like that place. Yeah, that's good. Well, mm. What else we got? Well, there is that, there's a Facebook page we've got. Ah, uh, that's my pointer finger. Yeah, yeah. That's facebook.com right, like that slash Jupiter Broadcast. What else we got? I, got, I want more. Uh, I'm, well, Twitter. Twitter.com slash Chris Elias. Yeah, everyone loves Twitter. You're on there. Brian Lunduke. I am. You're on there. Do we have anything else? Is that all we got? <laughs> Probably. Probably. Oh, I right. don't know. Hmm. Do we tell them we have a website now? We, JupiterBroadcasting.com. Nice. Nice. Uh, Can't believe I forgot that one. That's it. Hey, we should mention Probably. if you haven't uh, subscribed to one of the RSS feeds recently, uh, there is... Audio versions for MP3 and OG feeds. There's an HD feed. There's an iPod video feed, which works fine on Android devices. Yeah. All that kind of stuff over at jupiterbroadcasting.com as well. Oh, I should mention before we go, I should mention at the top of the show, uh, I'm going to be talking with someone from Canonical about uh, buying uh, apps in the uh, Android, oh, or yeah. in the Ubuntu, sorry, marketplace, right. the Ubuntu App Store, right. App Center. Um, uh, you know, because there's been some confusion about that. If you're in the beta, you can buy one thing right now it's the Fluendo Codex. Oh, okay. And that's cool. But I, I, I wanted to get more information about what when? more is going to come and like yeah. how is that going to work. Yeah. So I'm going to be talking with someone tomorrow. So next episode, we'll be talking about that on the show. Get the, get the update on the software center. Absolutely. Is they call it, right? The software uh, center? It's the Ubuntu Software Center or something okay. like that. Yeah. All, right. All right, everyone. Well, thanks so much for tuning in to this episode of the Linux Action Show. And we'll see you next week.
Where's my hand at? What's my hand doing? The only problem here is this hand. I feel like it has, needs to be doing something. What do you think? Huh. Yeah, there we go. Here we go. I'm gonna hold on to the thing right here. Yeah. Oh wait, let's try this. Hey, uh, hey guys. Yeah. Hey clowns. How about we stop effing around back there? Sorry. Let me get your finger out of there. Here we go. <laughs> this week on the lint. Oh, it's ruined. No, it's ruined. Someone back there talked. It's ruined. You guys were gonna get magic? The magic's gone. Why don't I just why don't I just walk away right now, Chris? What do you think? All right, I'm gonna talk. Ugh, that feels good. Hey guys, this week on the Linux Action Show, we got our hands on Linux Mint's New Debian Edition. And what's there our early impressions? Broadcom just dropped a bomb of awesome, and we get all kinds of excited. Then we take a look under the hood of Ubuntu and find out how the blah 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 all over the world. Ah, oh, this week on the Linux Action Show.